Welcome to McGuire's Car Crazy. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or gal, if you love cars, you're a car guy. And this is Car Crazy Central shouting the passion that 30 million of us who are car guys across America and tens of millions more around the world share in common, no matter what kind of cars we love. Join us as we focus on this emotion of being car crazy. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple, that's right, we want to make you just a little more car crazy! There is such passion in our industry. There is such love of automobiles. And, and people hide them in their garage and they never bring them up very often. It's been really a dream to build the car. The car is incredibly fast, uh, it handles incredibly well. And uh, it, it's just amazing for a time capsule of its age how much fun it really is to drive. We believe that that's really how the Ford Motor Company got started. It actually got started because Henry Ford, just by the luck of the draw, won a car race in 1901. And now our host, Barry McGuire. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another very special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy, coming today from the Hot Rod Restoration Trade Show in Indianapolis, Indiana. You know, hot rodding has become so big that the builders need their own trade show to keep up with all the new technologies. And we have Debbie Lewis to thank for producing this fabulous show. In addition to the exhibits, Dick Messer, the executive director of the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, presents a Lifetime Achievement Award to a famous icon in our hobby. Because of 32 Ford is celebrating its 75th anniversary, the award took a departure from the norm and honored the Ford family. Accepting the award on behalf of the Ford family was Edsel Ford. One of the great honors I have every year is to interview the award winner after the presentation. And this year, because the recipient is Edsel Ford, we thought you might like to listen in as Edsel shares his inside stories about the Ford family. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I, uh, I always like to start this morning by saying we're all car guys, but I'd like to know, let me hear from you, if you can honestly say that you are certifiably car crazy. Let me hear from you. <laughs> yeah. The great heritage of Ford. I mean, it, it cannot be overstated. The Ford family and, and the company. Um, maybe we should start help everybody understand the genealogy. <laughs> okay, let's go back to this. Yeah, so it we does put get it all a little confusing because people don't know how it all gets sorted out, but um, Henry had only one son, my grandfather Etzel, and then Etzel had four children, Henry Ford II, who was my dad, um, Benson Ford, uh, Josephine Ford, my aunt who just recently passed away, and William Clay Ford, who is the father of Bill Ford Jr., who is our current chairman. Right. The impact that the Ford Motor Company, the Ford families had on America, not just from the actual making of the cars, but from a social aspect as well. They're just, just unbelievable. If we, we could really appreciate that this morning. Well, it, it's, um, and you know, those of us who have grown up with it don't think about it very often. Um, people always ask me, well, you know, what do you think of your great grandfather, your grandfather, and the impact they've had? And we really don't think about it because we grew up with it. And I was always at my great grandfather's house, and it's always been in our blood. It's always been a part of our DNA. And the stories about Henry Ford the first are, are legendary. I'm always fascinated with this fact that, that Etzel ended up being the, 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 the son of the most important industrialist in America and was sort of the unknown son. And it's really too bad because Etzel really played a, a, a very important role at Ford. And, and he was the designer. He was the one that, that put the passion in the business. I mean, really, if it wasn't for Etzel, you know, we wouldn't have seen the 32 Ford. We wouldn't have seen the, the beautiful Lincolns. Uh, we wouldn't have seen the beautiful Continental that everybody looks at and, and uh, still today, to me, is one of the prettiest right. cars ever. So, there, and, and it was always interesting to sit with my grandmother, who, who actually Cynthia and I used to see quite often. We used to go, and, and my grandmother, even, even after 20 years of my grandfather being deceased, she would just be in awe of him. 
and how and what a wonderful man he was and 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 how really he and his father actually got along pretty well so all the stories about Henry and Ansel tussling um, I think are, are fabricated by someone because I don't think there was the tussling that you know people talk about and you mentioned his estate you can visit that estate when you go to Detroit you want to just step back in time. It is fantastic. The artifacts are there. You can go in it's in St. Clair Shores. It's in St. Clair Shores, and it's a beautiful house. And my grandmother died, and she left quite a bit of money for the house. And so the house looks as if she's never left, that she might be just out shopping. Right, exactly. We have all the silver, all the china, all the photographs, all the furniture. Um, and, and we have a new wedding dress display that I'm very proud that my wife's wedding dress is in this display. And the house is beautiful. And we have, um, we have uh, Etzel's first Continental. Um, and we're hoping to, um, to add a few more collections. My friend Bill Warner yes. has, uh, has Etzel's Speedster, and I want that back. And I just found the other day that uh, there's actually a 32 bobtail that, that Etzel built um, that a man just found not too long ago, I think about six months ago, and I want that car too. So we're trying to uh, we're trying to gather up the history and the and the, the history of Etzel to make sure. I don't think Bill Warner's going to part with his speedster yeah. though. <laughs> Bill Warner, who created the uh, Amelia Island Concorde, which found that car, it had been hidden away for for all these years. And, and he has a lot of cars. That was the one he's most proud of. Oh, I ride him about once a week. Yeah, yeah dear Bill, don't forget Etzel. <laughs> You mentioned the Continental. That's a great story about how your grandfather Edsel went to Europe. And help us help us enlarge on that story a little bit, so we can. Well, it, it was really Edsel's vision that that uh, that really came to to buying the Lincoln Motor Company. But I think Edsel wanted a luxury division, and uh, then he decided he really wanted to build a very special Lincoln, um, and that was to be called the Continental. Uh, and he had the designers work up a model, and then he took it down to Florida down to Palm Beach, because back in, the, in those days, Palm Beach was where everybody went in the social category. And uh, he, he took it and literally had it in Palm Beach for about a month, and he showed it to all his friends who were down there. And they, of course, they thought the car was absolutely fantastic. Etzel brought it back to Dearborn and said, we're building this car, and off he went. So it's a good story. Great, yeah, one of the great collector cars of all Beautiful time. Beautiful car, it really it is, it really is. The icon, I would say, of the whole car hobby, being the 32 Deuce. Take us back to the, to the beginnings of that story. I think it was Etzel's design taste that really brought the 32 Ford. Um, I think Henry wanted to do a V8. I think he was the engine tinkerer, um, and he was the one that really wanted the engine. And I think it was an interesting mating of, you know, really, back in 1932, this car must have been absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. And so this was a, a wonderful coming together of a father and a son. You know, the, the father with the engine and the son with the body, and hence we get the 32 V8s. And history hasn't stopped. And I, and I sometimes wonder if they could come back and look at what we've done to their car. It would yeah, be, yeah, uh, true. it'd be yeah, true. Pretty, pretty wild. I mean, they could not have possibly imagined that 75 years later, what is it about the 32, do you suppose, that has, has made it this great icon? Probably the Beach Boys. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a pretty easy car to work on, uh -huh. you know, and, and it was uh, readily available, and you could find a 32. And clearly, a lot of the, the historians or the, the uh, restorators um, didn't care too much about what engines they put in it, um, because, you know, a lot of the 32s now um, don't have Fords in them, but that's okay, too. That's right. That's okay, too. But it, it, it you know, it's just a, it's a wonderful icon of our industry. It really is. Talk about your grandfather for a moment. He's all that he accomplished, but he died a young man. He did. He died, um, he died when he was 49 years old. Man. Yeah, it was really a, it was a tragedy. The rumor has it that uh, he was on a farm drinking unpasteurized milk hmm. and, um, and had a stomach ulcer and, and literally died. And you know, my grandmother lived in that beautiful home her entire life without Etzel for 35 years, almost 40 years. And she would tell us wonderful stories about Edsel. My grandmother loved martinis. And um, <laughs> after dinner, she turned to me and she said, Ned. And I said, Ned? I said, excuse me, we're getting very personal now. 
I said, Granny, what, who's Ned? Oh, she said, that's what I used to call your grandfather. <laughs> so I thought that was nice. Yeah. So she used to tell you these great stories. Can you think of what are those great stories? When he was brought out of the Navy, he was uh, uh, brought back to Ford Motor Company. Ford Motor Company was in really sorry shape. Uh, my grandfather had passed away. My great-grandfather was quite an elderly man. Harry Bennett was at this time literally running the Ford Motor Company. And uh, my, my dad thought, well, this isn't a very good idea. Um, you know, I'm, we're going to take charge. I'm going to bring in the whiz kids. And it was up to him. And he had told his gr grandfather he was going to do this, that he was actually going to go in and fire Harry Bennett. For all of you who may or may not know the, the history of the Ford Motor Company, Harry Bennett was head of security operations at Ford uh, and was a really tough guy and, uh, and literally um, uh, got into slug fights with the UAW and there was this great uh, thing called the Battle of the Overpass where Harry Bennett's people literally went at the top of this overpass uh, at the Rouge plant and got into fisticuffs with the UAW because at that point in time, Ford didn't want the UAW in. Uh, and Harry Bennett was told that that was what he had to do, and he was a tough guy. So my father walked into uh, Harry Bennett's office and sat down across the desk from him, and um, uh, they exchanged, exchanged pleasantries, and apparently Mr. Bennett said to my dad, uh, I know why you're here. And my father said, Mr. Bennett, today is your last day at Ford Motor Company. And apparently Harry Bennett on the other side of the desk pulled out a drawer and my father said to me, he said, he was going to kill me. <laughs> he said, I know for a fact Harry Bennett had a gun in that drawer, and he was going to pull the gun out and shoot me. <laughs> Thank God he never did. But he was, my, my father was just terrified. He thought this was the, you know, his last day on earth. So what was in the drawer? Apparently there was nothing. It was just, he just pulled the drawer out for some unknown reason. Um, and there was not a gun. My dad was convinced there was a gun in there, so it, uh, but it never happened. But, Are there inside stories that we don't get to hear in the press? We all know what Ford, the Ford family has done, but the inside stuff, can you give us some, <laughs> some uh, inside scoop to help us get a little better insight of what? Uh... There isn't a day that doesn't go by where people always say to me, the real difference between your company and everybody else is the name of the family is on the top of the building. <laughs> um, and you know, for years and years, and even today, people refer to it as Fords. Well, I work at Fords. And I never understood that until I asked someone, you know, a, a, probably about 10 years ago, and they said, oh, it's possessive. It's Mr. Ford's company. Mm -hmm. And that was the way it was. It, that was the way it started when, uh, when my great-grandfather founded the company in 1908, 19, yeah. oh, 1907. Man. Well, I'll, I'll tell you another inside story that, that maybe none of you know, and you might find this interesting. Um, about six years ago, I was approached by uh, someone in our public affairs office, and they said, you know, we've come across a car called Sweepstakes, and we don't know very much about it. We're actually going to research this vehicle. It turns out that um, Henry Ford commissioned this vehicle when way before Ford was even established. He built some, a vehicle called the Sweepstakes. And he was going to drive it, and it was one race, and it was in October of 1901. And apparently, this race was billed in Detroit as the race of champions because he was actually driving. He himself, first time, first and only time he ever drove a race car, he drove it against uh, a guy named Alexander Winton, who had a car that was twice the size of the sweepstakes vehicle. And Henry Ford won the race. And so we believe that that's really how the Ford Motor Company got started. It actually got started because Henry Ford just by the luck of the draw, won a car race in 1901. <laughs> Isn't that something? We, we, we saw that reenacted at, the, uh, at yeah. your 100th anniversary That's right. of Ford yeah. at uh, Greenfield Village. Yeah. Yeah. And that whole celebration, the 100th anniversary celebration, was so great. And they had the tour of cars coming from yep. California all yep. the way across. And yep. you welcome in in the rain. Yep, yep. <laughs> Well, it, it was a part of our history, and, and uh, I was just amazed at the kind of vehicles that actually showed up at the, at the anniversary. I took, Cynthia and I brought our four boys, and we actually spent the whole day on, on a Saturday walking around looking at these cars. There is such passion in our industry. There is such love of automobiles 
And, and people hide them in their garage and they never bring them out very often. And, and so when we had our, um, our 100th anniversary, there were some really outstanding cars that people brought. It's just a whole plethora of really neat vehicles that even I hadn't seen. So it was great fun. It's, it's yeah. really something. Edsel, what can we say? Thank you, you my friend. friend. Thank you. You're such a great spokesman for the much. Ford family, the company, great car guy. Yes. <laughs>
My car craziness didn't start when I bought this car. It started back in 1987 when my dad bought a Buick Grand National, brand new when they first came out. Riding around in that car when I was a kid ignited something in me that has lasted until this day. I can remember being outside with my dad when I was a little kid and helping him clean the car, even though the only thing I could really reach was the wheels. Over the next few years, my dad acquired many cars from Cadillacs to Studebakers. His love for cars and allowing me to be a part of that create a bond that can never be broken. To this day, I am outside every day cleaning and tweaking something on the car. And one day when I have a son or daughter, I hope we can share that same thing my dad and I did, Matthew. Well, thank you, Matthew, for sending us your car crazy confession because quite frankly, it genuinely, and I mean genuinely, touches a soft spot for me. There are so many benefits for igniting the car crazy gene in our sons and daughters, and we talk a lot about them on this show for good reason. You know, it's never been so important to stay close to our kids while they're growing up. And cars offer the best opportunity I know to make that an easy task. But you know what? There are a lot of car guys among us whose sons and daughters avoid the car hobby like a plague. Now, granted, a lot of kids are pre-wired from birth to have different kinds of interests and still love their dad. But from my unofficial poll, more often than not, the reason is parental failure, dad failure. It's obvious that we love our cars, and it's our shared love for cars that bonds us together into the world's greatest fraternity. But here's the problem. There are car guys who shout the message to their kids that they love their cars more than they love them by consistently leaving them without a dad to go to work on a car or go to a car show. Indeed, there are a lot of kids who see themselves competing with the car hobby for their dad's attention and losing the battle. And then we wonder why we can't get them interested in old cars. For these kids, the car hobby literally prevents them from having a close relationship with their dad, and they will never forget it or forgive their dad for not putting them first. You know, please, dads, please hear me on this. Cars should be a tool, not a hindrance, to loving our kids. Honoring God by mixing old cars with great parenting is the best formula I know of to build close, lifelong relationships with their kids. And that's the truth. Take it to the bank. Thank you, Matthew, for making this point so vividly clear for us today and for making all of us just a little more car crazy. Hey, check this out. The SEMA Show, the largest and most prestigious automotive aftermarket trade show in the world, is now open to CarCrazyCentral.com visitors. Car Crazy Central's bringing you all the excitement and breaking news each day with our four teams of cameras and journalists' coverage. Plus, Barry McGuire will be on stage interviewing top celebrities for both CarCrazyCentral.com and SEMA Television. To catch all the action, check out the SEMA Insider on CarCrazyCentral.com.